Hello everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Faith. That's been on my mind a lot recently. I've seen the strong faith of friends who are going through very difficult times at the moment. And I've also found myself speaking to a couple of people in the last few days who find faith a difficult concept. So I don't think that it's any coincidence that today's readings are all about faith. Or that I've just started reading Reverend Rob Taylor's new book, The Mountains of the Lord. And the first chapter, which by the way, totally blew me away, is all about faith. So I want to start by reading part of Psalm 101, the psalm set for today. And it's a song of praise to God for his faithfulness to us. I'm going to read Psalm 111, verses 4 to 9. <clears throat> the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast for ever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God is so faithful to us. He's done so much for us. So what about our faith in him? Our trust in him? Paul reminds the Galatians, that they came to faith by believing in the gospel of Christ, believing that their salvation was brought about by his death on the cross. But now they seem to have been persuaded that they can earn their salvation by their own efforts. Foolish Galatians. Let's listen to the reading from Galatians 3, and I'm going to read verses 1 to 14. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing. Does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law? Or because you believe what you heard? Consider Abraham. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one is justified by God by the law because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, 
Cursed is everyone who hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This passage is all about being right by God by putting our faith in him, trusting him, not trying to earn his approval by what we do. It's about grace rather than law. God has given us laws to live by and we do our best to live by them because we love him and want to do what is right. But if we are honest with ourselves, we know that we will never keep them completely. We will always fall short. We cannot earn our salvation by what we do. We depend on God's grace. We depend on what he did for us in sacrificing his son for us. People often find it difficult to understand a concept like faith. It's easier to understand when we see it being lived out in someone else. As I said earlier, I'm seeing that in friends who are presently living out their faith in the face of great difficulties in their own lives. Paul puts forward the life of Abraham as an example of great faith. And he reminds us that we are descendants of Abraham if we follow his example of faith in God. Abraham trusted God as he obeyed the call of God and left his prosperous home in Haran to trek as a nomad all the way to the promised land of Canaan. But an even greater test awaited him much later when God told him to sacrifice his son, Isaac, a son whom God had promised him to him and Sarah in their old age. This was an incredible test of Abraham's faith. And as Rob Taylor reminds us in his book, it seemed to go against everything that Abraham knew about the nature of God, his goodness and his love. As we read the story in Genesis 22, we find that Abraham was ready to pass the test. But ultimately, God did not require it of him. I suggest you read the story again and then reflect on some of the questions that Rob Taylor poses in his book. What are you prepared to sacrifice to follow Jesus? What do you treasure most deeply and what might it mean to surrender that treasure to God? Where do you draw the line with God and say, no, I can't go any further with you. You are now asking too much of me. Do you have such a line? How do you define the word mine? Have you really got your head around the idea that everything belongs to God? not to you, and he gives and he takes away? Or do you see your faith as what you can get out of God? Please, may I get this job? Please heal me. Please keep me and my loved ones safe. And uh, yes, we do indeed pray those prayers, but we must be prepared to follow the Lord anywhere that he leads us. Abraham's story challenges the way so many of us have been brought up to be independent, self-sufficient, strong. We have to change that mindset because the whole thrust of God's word teaches us that we need to learn to depend on him and follow him unconditionally. How do we come to have this great faith? 
I think it comes from having a close relationship with God. To quote Rob, people with faith, their hearts are so thoroughly invested in the God they have come to know. When we come close to God, we learn to trust him with our very lives. God didn't require Abraham to sacrifice his son, but he did require Abraham to be prepared to give all that he had to follow him. However, in love, God the Father sacrificed his son for us. That's a wonderful, incredible and deep thought. Can you say with Paul, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for each one of us, your faithfulness to us and your abundant blessings. Through your Holy Spirit, help us to come closer to you, to come to know you in an ever deeper way so that we can learn to trust you in everything. Help us to realise that everything we have comes from you and that we depend on you for every moment of our lives. May we realise that of ourselves, we can never be good enough for you. It is through your grace, Lord, through the sacrifice of your son Jesus for us on the cross, that we are made right with you, that we can come into an intimate relationship with you. And so we thank you, Lord, for your love and for your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let's, as usual, share the grace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. And so we pray together the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa, protect our women and children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go well. Keep well. Stay safe. Be faithful. Goodbye. Blessed be your name and the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name.
blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Name, and the blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name.